I stare vacantly at a reflection of myself in a turned-off monitor. All I can take in right now is the imperfection of this reflection. I see nothing of charm and humour here, only vat of malice and hatred. But I do not know for what. I am caught in this mirror, and I plunge myself into it, seemingly wanting to find out what is behind this image, the ideology behind this image, the soul within this image. But hard as I feel I try, I do not gain anything. I see a face, a light black skin. I see it is elongated, but very little nose. Long, but with very little gain out of my face. A mouth underneath, twisted and frowning. Eyes, round, bright white, but with just one pupil in each. My body seems twisted, unhealthy. We are naturally thin. Our skin appears shriveled, loose over stick-like figures. But me? I look different. Turning away, I allow myself to remember that the image is there. And as long as I remain in this position, it will be there. So, I try to keep it away from my vision. But it does not matter. For as I may only have to obey the aesthetics of that image for only a few minutes, perhaps in a day, I know that it is only how others see me always. I wish that it could not be. That I could be someone else. Not just their body, but their mind too. But I am aware that someone else would have to bear the indignity of being this creature that I am. Ultimately, being my body, my mind, my soul, that it could only ever be me. It is my image, myself, that casts me away from people, and that is loneliness. The true loneliness. I face one of my crew. He is a good soul. I ask him what I want to be a simple question. What are we going to do? I have asked this in our true tongue, at least as true as can be. It was formed many years ago, comprising the many different tongues of our many different nationalities. It is a standardised tongue, one that all we of our generation and many before have always spoken, always known, though many fundamentalists do not like this. But my reasons for using this tongue are to get closer to the heart of the soul in mind. Skurnage, for I believe that it is Skurnage, is slightly taken aback, but not until he realises the language in which he speaks, for it is no longer the norm, for I have not made it the norm. Well, Sire William, and it is here that I cut him off, for in this instance I do not want to be called by my adopted name. No, I say. Well, Sire Fright, we should attack. We must attack. Sadly, this is the answer I was looking for. The confirmation that I needed, that what we were to be doing was right. But I have to ask, why? For it is our only way, sire. Our other options are no longer available to us. They are much stronger now than we could ever have imagined them being. Then so it must be. And I speak this in English because it is the right way to act. Our fleet has now reached Earth. We are finally here, though it is taking a long time. And yet there is still much to do. Many preparations to be made. Now, more than ever, we must be unified. And it is me that must ensure this. Yet it is Earth, and our whole purpose here that has caused dissolution in the first place. I am tortured by dreams of Holly at night. I wish she was here to guide me through this. But no, she is not. It is therefore down to me, and only me.